all right so what's up you guys it's your boy don show and for today we are back with another grand blue fantasy video today i wanted to talk about a more negative side of things because we need to talk about some of the worst beginner mistakes that you can make whilst playing grand blue fantasy now grand blue fantasy itself is a pretty tough game on its own in quite some aspects and if i'm being really honest the game is quite vague as it doesn't really warn or tell you about much as a beginner and after seeing my videos on grand blue fantasy picking up the pace i figured i'd make a video on some of the beginner mistakes that you'd really want to avoid making when starting out the game so hopefully today's pointers are able to keep you guys from making these mistakes and will help you guys avoid making some blunders you wouldn't want to look back on down the line. Now just before we dig into the video, I just wanted to say that if you do enjoy Grand Blue Fancy or Grand Blue Fancy Versus content, then you might want to consider hitting that sub button as I do cover both games. I will always try to keep you guys updated with everything as fast as possible surrounding these games so any sort of support will be really appreciated. Now with all the typical talk out of the way, let's get into the video. So first up we have perhaps the most common mistake that beginners tend to make and that is spending their crystals right away. Most of the time the logic behind this is that newer players want good characters and well where do you get those premium characters? Right, the gacha. However this isn't always good and matter of fact it's not recommended at all to roll outside of a certain period within the game which are the fests aka galas that the game has. Now galas or fests are highly recommended since the rates are doubled to 6% and the units available are the better ones in game. I already broke down what galas specifically do and how they work in my previous video so if you're not too sure on how they work then I'd highly recommend checking out my beginner tip video where I completely broke down how it works. But to come back to the point on why it's a mistake to summon on non gala periods it pretty much comes down to you spending your crystals on not only a worse character pool but also worse rates as a non gala period has a rate of 3% and that isn't really favorable when you can spend your crystals on a banner with 6% instead and whether you are a beginner or not spending your hard earned crystals to end up with nothing or something that you weren't aiming for can be highly discouraging so saving yourself the trouble of disappointment nearly makes this worth it on its own. So make sure to save your crystals wisely and spend them at the right time to maximize your winnings at the end of the day. Now on place number 2 I have a very expensive mistake newer players tend to make and that is spending resources that they don't know the value of. Making them use hard to come by resources in certain situations that is everything but worth it. And to give a better explanation on what I mean here with resources I'm specifically talking about your Damascus bars, your golden bricks and last but not least your sunlight stones. These items are pretty hard to come by as is and the more you play the game the more you'll realize the value of them. And as a beginner that value isn't quite clear yet and it's a mistake that is relatively easy to make as well so it happens more often than one might think. You definitely won't be happy looking back on making this mistake once you've reached a certain stage in the game. As once you reach that point you'll be more familiar with the resources and the situations you would like to use them in and you will actually end up needing them more than ever. And to give even more context to this, these items are specifically used for uncapping weapons and summons and whilst uncapping your weapons and summons is something you should definitely want to do, you most of the time do not want to do it with these resources as these resources are safe for specific summons and weapons that are extremely strong and hard to come by. The reason you will want to use these on specific weapons and summons is quite simple, as pulling a weapon one time or a summon one time is in the realm of possibilities and is relatively doable with just a bit of luck, but pulling the same weapon three times over will become a lot harder harder to do and generally just isn't possible unless you're extremely lucky or you're willing to pay your way out. And that is where these resources come to play as you can simply use the sunlight stone to uncap your summon rather than having to pull a new one and in case of a weapon you can always use your damascus bar to get the job done instead of praying for a dupe from the gacha. The mistake is often made that newer players use these items to uncap farmable weapons or summons or use them on weapons and summons that just straight up aren't worth it. And that is a really simple yet very costly mistake to make once you're beginning this game. And I think we can all agree on the fact that pulling something specific 3 times over is a lot harder compared to using a single item, so you will definitely do yourself a favor by using these resources rather carefully instead of using them without knowing the value of it. Then I specifically wanted to highlight the golden brick quickly as well, as this is definitely up there as one of the most valuable resources in the game. And for as much as this item is worth, the rule is quite simple for it. If you have one and you aren't sure what it is or when to use it, then don't use it until you reach the point in the game where you understand when they become necessary to you. And I know that sounds extremely lame but that is exactly the rule you should be living by. And I would leave my point of resource management here but to give a bit more context to the golden brick, a golden brick is generally used towards end game content and a good example for that will be the eternal recruitment process but another great example is the ULB opus weapons which are the strongest weapons in the game. So until then please be careful about your golden bricks and take care of them as you go. For mistake number 3 is way less intense than mistake 
mistake number two, but rather a mistake that you are better off avoiding. And that mistake is not making use of your unlimited storage from your home screen crate. Beginners tend to pick everything up right away, but this can clutter up your inventory quite fast, as random items like rare weapons or summons can pile up fast and overtake your inventory in no time, leaving you with no space when you need it. However, this is highly unnecessary, as your crate has three different tabs, which one of them allows you to have unlimited storage, meaning you can pick something up at any time that you feel like it without it disappearing on you. And to explain the crate system a little bit further, on the crate in your home screen you have three different tabs. You have the no limit tab, you have the time limited tab, and at last the picked up tab. So now that we are aware of our tabs, let's break down what they do. For starters, we have the No Limit tab. You have no time limit to redeem these items in this tab, meaning that your weapons and summons won't take any space in your inventory, but will still be available to you at any time. So if you don't need them, you simply don't redeem them. But within the No Limit tab, you do have a sub tab, and that one is fine to clear, as those items do not use any storage like weapons and summons do, so you can freely collect the items like crystals and moons if you want. Then we have the Time Limit tab, and just like the name suggests, you have a time limit to redeem the items in this tab. So be careful as they will disappear after a while, either pick them up or save them by using the stash function, but don't let them go to waste. Then at last we have the picked up tab, which is yet again exactly what it tells you. It's a tab where you can see all the recent items that you have picked up along the way. So save yourself some space in your inventory and use these tabs accordingly. Then we have mistake number 4, which is not using third party resources outside the game to help your actual game experience. Besides the fact that you are now watching a video as a resource on the game, it's still very much so that beginners tend to try and figure out stuff on their own, whilst 99% of the time that is everything but necessary as there is plenty ways of obtaining answers to your questions by looking around. A good example for a resource that could explain everything that you might want to know will be the Gromblu wiki, as till this day every player I know uses this site frequently. And if you want a more direct approach to getting answers about questions that you might have, then something like a reddit thread or a discord might be more of your liking. And since we are on topic, I'd like to mention that I too have a place for all your questions and answers that you might be looking for and that is my very own discord and whilst this might sound like an extremely strong shill it's very much a place that has grown rapidly since i've been covering gromblu and many gromblu beginners have found their way over to my discord and have been receiving direct help from high level players about the game as there are plenty people around willing to help you get the answers that you might need i myself am also around to answer any questions that you might want to ask so feel free to stop by the discord if you are a beginner who would like direct help about the game or just a place to hang out with fellow beginners and high level players alike. So both high level players and beginners are very much welcome and I will leave the link in the pinned comment down below. And at last for today's video on beginner mistakes which isn't particularly something in game but rather something to think about and that is the fact that you very much should take your time whilst playing Grand Blue Fantasy. I felt like I really needed to add this to the list as I tend to see quite a lot of beginners worry about like 10 things at a time and sometimes even worry about stuff that they aren't even close to getting done and that just adds stress of having to play this game more than you should which is really unnecessary all things considered. Grand Blue isn't meant to be a speedrunning game and if I'm honest attempting to speedrun Grand Blue will only make you hop over the joy of exploring and playing the game by its own because you're too focused on catching up on stuff that you're seeing other players have and do. The game won't walk away all of a sudden so it's highly recommended to just take your time with it and deal with it on your own accord. This will also avoid you having a burnout because if you do get one you might just end up taking a very long break or even no return to the game at all. Take your time with improving, don't worry too much about what others are doing or having and just gradually work your way up and enjoy the world of Grand Blue as a whole. So that was it for today's video. Hopefully you you guys haven't made any of these mistakes yet or are now in a place of understanding where you're able to avoid making these mistakes as you go on into the skies to go on your own adventure within the game. And before I close off this video, I just really wanted to thank everyone for the overwhelming amount of support that I've received so far for my videos on Grand Blue Fantasy. I hope I can keep everyone entertained and informed as they go about making more and more videos for this game as time goes on. And of course a big shout out to all the homies in the discord who helped me clear the raids that you guys saw being used as background gameplay in today video. Now with that said, it was your boy Doncho. Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy, stay blessed, and I'm out. Peace.